All right, this video will be covering the last page of the chapter five review number two, starting at number 25. So here we're gonna be graphing our lines. At number 25, we see that this equation is in point slope form, which means I know the slope and I know a point on the line um, just from looking at it. So the slope is negative three because it's always just the number right in front of the parentheses. The point, however, you have to remember that it's opposite of how it looks in the equation. So if this is a positive seven here, it's a negative seven in my points. And if this is a negative six in the equation, it's a positive six in my point. So now that I know the slope and the points, I'm gonna graph the point first. So I'm gonna go to the point negative seven comma six. So I'm gonna start at the origin. I'm gonna go back to negative seven. And then I'm gonna go up to six. Okay, so I've plotted that point. Now I'm gonna do my slope. So my slope is negative three over one, which in words means down three, right one. So starting at my points, I'm gonna go down three, right one and plot a point, down three, right one and plot a point. So you wanna have at least three points um, if you can. Um, and then you're gonna connect that, extending beyond the points and including arrowheads. The next one is a special case. This is y equals a number, which is a horizontal line. y equals a number, slope is zero, horizontal line. So I'm gonna go on the y-axis to negative six, and I'm gonna draw a horizontal line going through that point at negative six. Okay, number 27 is the opposite. This is our vertical line. This is our other special case because it's x equals a number. It's an undefined slope, a uh, vertical line. So I'm gonna go on the x-axis to positive eight. And then I'm gonna draw a vertical line going through that point. Okay, number 28 is in standard form. And so remember, there's two ways that you can graph standard form. You can convert it to y equals mx plus b, meaning you would solve for y, or you can find the x and y intercepts. So I'm gonna find the x and y intercepts on this one, but again, you can do it the other way if you'd like. So for the x intercept, I would plug in zero for y, which means that negative two y would go away. So I really just have negative five x is equal to 10. If I divide both sides by negative five, I see x is equal to negative two. So my x-intercept is at negative two. For the y-intercept, that's when I would plug in zero for x, and so that negative five x would go away and I would be left with negative two y equals 10. I divide both sides by negative two, so y would be negative five. So my y-intercept would be down at negative five. Okay, so I found the x and y-intercepts. I use a straight edge to connect them extending beyond the points and including arrowheads. Okay, the next one is in slope intercept form, which means the slope is negative two thirds and the y intercept is negative five. So I'm gonna graph the y intercept first. So I'm gonna go on the y axis down to negative five and plot a point. And then I'm gonna apply my slope. So if my slope is negative two thirds, that means down two, right three. So starting from my y-intercept, I'm gonna go down two, right three. Or I can go up to left three, either way. I have three points. I'm gonna connect them with my straight edge and include arrowheads. The last graphing problem here is also in standard form. So like I said on number 28, you can either find the X and Y intercepts like I did here, or you can convert it to be in Y equals MX plus B. And that's what I'm gonna do on this one. So I'm gonna subtract five X from both sides. Negative four Y is equal to negative five X minus 24. I divide both sides by negative four. And remember when we divide both, uh, or this right-hand side by negative four, we wanna divide each piece on top by negative four. So negative five divided by negative four is really just five fourths. 20, or, uh, negative 24 divided by negative four is just positive six. Okay, 
So here I know the slope is five fourths and I know the y-intercept is six. So I'm gonna go up on my y-axis to six and plot a point. And then my slope is five fourths. So starting at my y-axis, I'm gonna go up five. One, two, three, four, five. Well, if you look there, I go off the graph. So I don't wanna do that. So instead of going up five, right four, I'm instead gonna go down five, left four. Okay, so you can do that. You can go up and right or you can go down and left. Okay, so I have my three points. I'm gonna connect and include arrowheads. Okay, the last problem on this page is another word problem. And it says an oil tank is being filled at a constant rate. The depth of the oil is a function of the number of minutes the tank has been filling. It takes 10 minutes to fill the tank five feet and 15 minutes to fill the tank six feet. Okay, so that's the important information we're given. 10 minutes, it will fill for five, uh, um, 10 minutes, it will fill five feet and 15 minutes, it will fill uh, six feet. So first part says define the variable. So let's let X represent um, the number of minutes And we'll let y equal uh, the number of feet or the depth in feet, I guess. Okay, now the reason I let x represent the number of minutes is because x is your independent variable and y is always your dependent variable. Okay, so x is always independent, y is always dependent. Okay, and so the feet, the number of feet depends upon the number of minutes it's been feeling. Uh, filling and not the other way around. So your minutes are independent. They don't rely on anything else. Um, so that's how you know to do that. Now the second part says name the two points given. So the two points given are here in this last sentence. For 10 minutes, it fills five feet. And for 15 minutes, it fills six feet. Okay, again, X is minutes, Y is feet. So this should have been minutes, comma, feet, which is what we did. Minutes, comma, feet, minutes, comma, feet. Then it says find the rate of change, which just means slope, and then include the label. So we're gonna find the slope. So I have six minus five over 15 minus 10, which is one over five. Okay, and again, this is y over x. So this is feet over minute. So this says one foot per five minutes. So we can say the tank fills up one foot per five minutes. So every five minutes, the tank um, increases by a foot. The depth of the tank increases by a foot. It says write a linear equation in point slope form and in slope intercept. So we want point slope form and slope intercept form. That models the situation above. So first we'll do point slope form. Now for point slope form, we need a point and we need a slope. Well, here we have points and here we have the slope. So I'm just gonna pick one of these points and I'm gonna pick this first point here. I'm gonna use that point and this slope to write point slope. So y minus five is equal to one fifth times x minus 10. Okay, so that's point slope. That's, that's the first thing I needed. Then to rewrite it in slope-intercept form, I'm going to distribute and solve for y. So I'm going to distribute the 1 fifth. 1 fifth times negative 10 is negative 2. I add 5 to both sides. So y is equal to 1 fifth x plus 3. So that's the slope-intercept form. This is the point-slope form. Then it says, what is the real world meaning of the slope? So again, slope and rate of change mean the same thing. So if the slope is one fifth, it's what we already set up here. The tank fills up or increases one foot per five minutes. Okay, and what's the real world meaning of the y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept is three. We can tell that from here. And remember your y-intercept is your starting point. Okay, that's where you're starting from. So this means the tank uh, started 
with three feet of oil in it. Okay, so before we began filling it with more oil, it had already had three feet of oil in it. So it started with three feet and we were increasing it by one foot every five minutes.